There was a time when land ownership was a prerequisite to being able to vote. That was the thing back in the 18th century, and thank God that is not the case anymore. As you can tell from the title of this video, I will be covering the real estate industry's evolution and how the home ownership process will likely continue to change going forward. Technology is advancing every day, and there is no doubt that the home buying process today will be different 25 years from now. Whether it be automated by artificial intelligence or blockchain technology to help optimize the process and keep it more secure, there will be changes. My name is Makita. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, it would mean the world if you like this video and subscribe. We cover current events in the financial world, economic policies, and housing market activity. If that sounds like your cup of tea, then stick around. I hope you enjoy this video and let's get into it. To fully understand the changes this industry has gone through, not just real estate sales and purchases, but property ownership in general, we must go back a couple hundred years. The first tie to the standard American mortgage goes back to 1781 with the founding of the first commercial bank. The number of banks between 1820 and 1860 increased, which led to more loans being issued. During this period, money lending institutions issued between 55 and 700 million dollars in mortgage loans. In the stabilization of the U.S. banking system through the National Bank Acts of 1860s, mortgages became a standard option for home buying. Although mortgages were more normalized during this time, the process and terms differed from what we know today. The standard terms for a mortgage in the early 1900s were 50% down on a five-year loan. We are far from that, where the standard mortgage is usually a 30-year term and the typical down payment is anywhere from 3.5% to 10%. The way payments were structured was interest only for the majority of the term and then one balloon payment for the principal at the end of the term. The banks took care of the closing process and sellers would usually get their money directly from the lender at the end. But after the Great Depression, the government created the type of mortgage that we use now where you pay a set amount each month and it slowly pays off the loan. This is what led to the way we do closings now. Everything went well throughout the roaring 20s until 1929 when the Great Depression started. It lasted 10 years and ended in 1939. The banks had no money to lend and buyers had no cash to buy properties with. By the 1930s, 40 to 50% of all the home mortgages were in default because homeowners couldn't afford to make their payments anymore and 10% of the houses were in foreclosure. Let's take a look at how the actual sale and purchase of a home was conducted back then. The word escrow comes from the Middle English term escrow, which refers to a scroll or a checklist. Throughout history, buyers and sellers utilized trusted third parties to secure funds, crucial documents, and deeds until their obligations were fulfilled. In real estate, the term has evolved, but today escrow mainly refers to the handlings of funds. Escrow is also used to define the time period from offer acceptance to closing. For example, if somebody makes an offer and that offer is accepted, they are now in escrow and it typically lasts 30 days. Back then, buyers would typically sit with the seller and a lawyer when they wanted to purchase a property. The parties would agree and sign on the transaction and the terms of the sale. Before mortgages were normalized, it was common for the seller to hold a mortgage and be paid in small amounts. The process of selling the home was different. Before 1919, anyone could technically be a real estate broker without any special training or any licenses. This caused confusion and competition in the real estate market, with people putting signs in front of homes to try and sell them. Among broker signs on the property, there were also other random signs that other people placed to compete with them, and the seller would randomly choose a sign with which they wanted to sell their house with. Brokers then started hosting open houses where they would stay in the home for days or even weeks at a time until they found a buyer. However, they could only represent one house at a time because they were always at this open house, so they had no time to have any other listings on hand. Then in 1916, states began enacting laws requiring people who wanted to represent a party in a real estate transaction to be licensed. That was the year the term realtor was coined to mark real estate agents who are members of the National Association of Realtors. The National Association of Realtors holds agents to a code of ethics to ensure that the person who is selling the house is one of high moral character. By the 1930s, the industry was growing and real estate companies began to hire multiple agents to account for the multiple listings. And following World War II, there was a boom in housing due to soldiers returning home. And now from the 1990s until today, the process remains completely, almost completely unchanged. Besides the tighter lending standards following the 2008 financial crisis, the industry has remained relatively fixed for the past 30 something years. For those that don't know, lax lending standards are one of the significant factors that led to the financial crisis in 2008. We have a more detailed video on this topic, which I linked in the description below. If you want to find out a little bit more about 2008, go ahead and check it out. A quick breakdown of the present day home buying process goes as follows. The first step is the buyer typically applies for a pre-approval letter. They look for a home within their budget after being approved. They connect with an agent and tour homes that match their criteria. They find a house they like and they write an offer. Offer is accepted and contract is formed. Inspections as well as appraisal are scheduled. Lender gives final loan approval. The final walkthrough of the property happens. All contingencies are removed and the deal closes. All of this typically happens within the 30 day escrow period if everything goes well. This is best case scenario in a standard transaction transaction because things come up and terms are often renegotiated. But that basic breakdown of the timeline is to give you a general idea of the closing process. How will the standard transaction be 25 to 30 years from now? Well, with rapidly advancing technology, it's safe to assume that it will be different. As a matter of fact, a lot of real estate agents already say they cannot imagine working without ChatGPT, the chatbot made by OpenAI. Many agents have started using this software to generate listing descriptions for their listings. This begs the question, will real estate agents be completely wiped 
DAO and substitute it by this program entirely, which could potentially handle the transaction from start to finish. I myself doubt that AI will replace agents entirely, but it will be more of a tool that agents can utilize. Well, let me ask ChatGPT what they think. The reason is that AI might not be able to replicate the human experience entirely. People decide to work with salespeople due to the familiar human touch. Another person can relate to the home buying problems a home buyer faces. However, a program cannot. Some of the ways that this technology can be implemented in the industry, theoretically getting a pre-approval letter from the AI that has access to all of the current interest rates. AI would use their information to find you the lowest rate with your current income, credit score, and tax returns. AI could automate the data analysis and have built-in fraud detection. All of this stuff is completely doable by artificial intelligence and it's probably going to be doing it better than a human can. It is very possible that this can be the future of getting your pre-approval letter. Banks and loan originators could cut closing costs and passing on the savings on to the customer by not paying a loan officer a commission fee. It can also be argued that getting pre-approved for a loan is an emotional process and people prefer to work with a human as mentioned before for this reason. Loan officers like real estate agents are there to provide personal advice and inform the buyer to allow them to make the best and informed decision. But there's no doubt that there are people who would trade their emotions to save money on closing costs. The world is changing and the more we move forward, the more people prefer to be isolated and not really deal with human beings. This is seen in the following. For example, ordering DoorDash instead of going out and eating in public, ordering online to avoid going to the store, streaming movies at home instead of going to the movie theaters, and working from home instead of at the office. These are some of the ways times are changing, and I mean, you can't really blame people. Especially after COVID, it's been a hassle to get people back in the workplace. They prefer to work at home. People worry for their health and safety due to rising crime in certain areas and global pandemic like COVID, which changes the world forever. Businesses have worked around this and have tailored their products to fit around isolation humans. Is it implausible to think that one day the real estate industry will want to tailor to buyers and sellers who prefer isolation? I don't think so. And as far as the actual home buying process goes, there are many ways it can be changed. Some of you are aware of Apple's yet to be released product, the augmented reality headset that will be retailing for $3,000. I bring this up because augmented or virtual reality can be an excellent tool for agents in the future. One way it could be used is by allowing a home buyer to see homes without making the drive. Not like virtual property tours where they can see the footage of inside the house, but actually be able to walk around inside the house and see it in first person as if they were actually there. That's not even the best part. Now imagine this. They can actually change the interior of the house and design it to their own personal preferences. They would be able to see how it looks with their personal touches. Things like switching out the carpet for hardwood, maybe painting the cabinets, or just removing a couch to get a better idea of the space. This can all be done with the augmented reality headset. We can't do things like that right now and having the ability to would change the game entirely. If you're an agent watching this, I'm sure you have lost a sale because the buyer couldn't get past a certain item in the house, although it wasn't a permanent fixture. Well, Having this technology would allow the indecisive home buyer to make a better informed and visualized decision. This can all happen from the comfort of their own home or at the office. Which of these sounds better to you? Scheduling five to six different tours and driving around all day to see houses they may or may not like, or see 15 to 20 houses without moving more than a couple of feet apart from driving to the office, of course. And on top of that, being able to customize the homes to their preference, then deciding to go see a home or two or three in person. This would also help the out-of-state buyers. During the heat of the market, we witnessed people make blind cash offers out of state, only getting to see the property in person after it closed. Think about it. Does this sound absurd? Kind of. I mean, imagine you're making a half million dollar purchase and you only get to see it after it's closed. This is why virtual and augmented reality can potentially eliminate that entirely. Another form this industry can be changed is through blockchain technology. I assume that most of you know somewhat about blockchain technology, how it works, or why it's secure. Some of the ways blockchain technology is more secure for transferring funds are, number one is immutable ledger. The blockchain ledger is maintained across a network of computers and is difficult to alter, making a secure and tamper-proof record of transactions. Decentralization. The decentralized nature of blockchain technology makes it more secure as there's no central point of control that can be targeted by fraudsters. Cryptographic security. Blockchain transactions are secured through cryptography, making it difficult for fraudsters to manipulate or fake transactions. Transparency. All of transactions on a blockchain are publicly visible, increasing transparency, accountability, and reducing the risk of fraud overall. Smart contracts. Blockchain technology allows for the creation of smart contracts. These self-executing agreements automatically enforce the terms of a contract, reducing the risk of fraud and ensuring that obligations are fulfilled. Consensus mechanism. The consensus mechanism used in blockchain technology helps ensure that all nodes in the network agree on the state of the ledger, reducing the risk of fraud and helping maintain the blockchain's integrity. Long story short, it's uh, kind of hard to commit fraud with this. It's safe to say that it's possible to implement this into the process of 
buying or selling at home. One particular form of fraud that can happen in real estate is wire fraud. Home buyers wire funds for the deposit on the home purchase to the title company three days after offer acceptance. There have been occasions, not with us, but it has happened where a scammer was pretending to be the title company and requesting funds from the home buyer by email. The home buyer would think that they are sending money to the title company, but in reality, they just send it to some random scammer. There are steps taken to prevent this. However, it still does not eliminate it entirely. It's possible that blockchain technology can make this process more secure. Now for everybody's favorite, NFTs. It's possible that they will be used in real estate as digital form of documents. But aren't NFTs just JPEG monkeys? Let me stop you right there. Yes, they do come in many different forms. An NFT is a non-fungible token, a unique and digital asset representing ownership or proof of authenticity of an item or piece of content. Things like music, art, virtual real estate, and maybe even car and house titles in the future. For example, in California, they will begin testing NFTs for car titles. Prospect of NFT house titles is kind of exciting. I mean, they can optimize the home process and even make it more secure, possibly speeding up the title transfer as well. Instead of waiting a few days for the county to record the title transfer, what if it was done in a few seconds the moment the house closed. NFTs are stored on the blockchain and are unique and irreplaceable. Now I want you to picture this, the ideal real estate transaction. The motivated home buyer fills out a pre-approval application and within seconds is given the best rate for their situation. They get their budget and begin browsing for properties online. Let's say you are the agent. You connect with them and you offer them a consultation. Once you sit down with them, you find out what kind of home they are looking for. You compile a list of homes that match their criteria. You slap on that virtual reality headset, let them see all the homes they want and show them the one that they pick out in person. Make an offer with an NFT contract that is presented to the seller instantly. Offer is accepted and appraiser and inspections are automatically scheduled. The home buyer wires a picture of a monkey for the deposit. Artificial intelligence underwrites the loan and gives the final approval with human supervision, of course. And the deal closes in three days, 10 times faster than the current process. Typically, at least. The new homeowner holds the title to the house in his cold wallet. I had fun with this one, guys. And if you watched the entire video, thank you for your time. And I hope I was able to provide you with some value. If you enjoyed the history lesson, as well as the peek into the future of real estate, you're more than welcome to hit that like and subscribe button for more content. And I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe and stay informed.